Oh, you're done? Oh, okay. So hi, I'm Lori Versagan, and um, everyone should have gotten a handout called Bible Games. Just a quick note about it. Um, to save myself a lot of time and trouble, I cheated, and I just copied some games out of the appendix of uh, the new book I've just finished called Through the through the book of books. So as you're looking through this handout, you're going to see random page numbers at the bottom. That's, that's why. I, I really do know how to count. But, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's why. And um, if you'll turn to the first page, everybody have one or have access to one? I've been teaching kids, working with kids for over 30 years, both in Sunday school and homeschool co-ops. I've taught a lot of different subjects, and I have never found a more effective and fun method for teaching and reviewing concepts than games. So, and they don't have to be complicated, and they don't have to take a lot of time. So, um, I'm going to share with you some of the games I use most often, but before I do that, I want to give just a little introduction on why games, why they're so effective. And that's what's on the first page of your handout. Um, the first reason we all know, they're fun, right? Or they should be. Um, they keep kids engaged and motivated and thinking. Let's face it. If the kids are bored, they're not learning. They'll tune you out. Um, young kids especially do not learn by just being lectured at. Of course, if you've got a lot of visual aids and a lot of discussion going on, that's wonderful too. But games um, are also a great way to add fun and motivation to your teaching. Um, and the second reason I put games increase learning attention, learning retention dramatically. You can go online and Google all kinds of learning retention studies and you'll almost all of them show about the same results. Someone, and this is not children specific, but people in general, when they're just lectured to, they retain about 5% of what they hear. When they read, about 10%. Audiovisual, it jumps to 20%. Demonstration, 30%. Discussion, 50% and immediate use and application of what you've just taught, 90%. Huge jump. And games allow you to both discuss and immediately apply and demonstrate. So games greatly increase um, learning retention. So um, I'm going to share with you some, several games that I purposely chose one, ones that are simple, short, easily adaptable to any age and any concepts you want to teach. Now, the ones we're going to do have kind of pre-made concepts. They go with the lessons in some of the lessons in my book. But if you're teaching something else, you take the same game and just substitute the concepts. Um, so we're just going to go. We're going to, play, we're going to play some of them just to make sure you understand them, have some, a little bit of fun, wake you up a little. And so you will have to talk in my class. So turn the page to the first group. Oh, I forgot to say, since you asked me, just, oh, it's going to go the whole way, though, right? Yes. Okay, so, all right. I'll say it at the end, then. Okay. First group of games are my kind of all-purpose, no preparation at all, on-the-spot kind of games you can play, as long as you know questions you'd like to ask your kids. The first one is I call No News Hangman. Now, you probably all know how to play Hangman, but in my classes, I tell the kids we don't hang people. <laughs> so... Um, there's no little hangman, but it's played in a very similar fashion. Rather than just a single word, you take any phrase you would like your kids to remember that relates to something you've taught them. The example here is uh, the first part of 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given. And you would, instead of writing the letters on the board, you just write a blank for each of the letters, and you'll see that in the box there. I'm going to do a different one with you, so I'm going to put a different phrase. Okay. Then, to play, this is an every man for himself game, not a team game. So you each 
child in turn would guess a letter, just like in Hangman. If the letter's in the puzzle, they get a point, or I give tickets in my class for each time the letter's in the puzzle. So for example, in the all scripture is given by puzzle, if they guessed L, they would get two points or two tickets because there's two L's in the puzzle. However, if they guess a vowel, they only get one point or ticket regardless of how many times it's in the puzzle. So if they guessed an I, that's I is in there, I don't know, at least three times, but they'd only get one ticket for that. Does that make sense? Okay. So you guess the letters in turn, but it doesn't have to be your turn to solve the puzzle. As soon as you think you know the answer to the puzzle, the student raises their hand, and if they can give you um, the puzzle, they get three tickets. But here's the key to this game. Bonus question. Make them think about the puzzle. So if I have all scripture is given by, what's my bonus question probably going to be? Yeah, finish the verse. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Um, you always want to use games as an opportunity to discuss and teach, not just play. You sneak in your teaching. Okay, so I've just taught you some things, and I'm going to use this game to review what I just taught you. So, um, I'm sorry I don't know all of your names. I'm just going to have to point. Um, what I do is just go in order. Since this is one at a time, Sherry, give me a letter, and if it's in the puzzle, I'll put it up there. T. T. No, there's no T, so she wouldn't get a ticket, and I just move on. Give me a letter. Oh, now I'm just going to go to the front row. and, and. A. a. Okay. There are two A's. How many tickets is she going to get? One, because it's a vowel. You catch on fast. Okay. So you get one ticket. You know the puzzle. Yes, games are fun. He gets three tickets. Now... But you have to answer my question to get two more tickets. <laughs> One reason we play games is they're fun. What's the other reason I taught that we play games? Okay. Learning retention. So you would get five points or five tickets. Okay. Understand? Okay, so that's a, this is a great game to play when the preachers go overtime, you know, and you've exhausted your lesson and your snacks and everything else. You can just pull this out and... And then, you know, the kids love to make up their own puzzles. And you just tell them, it has to be something that we talked about in, in the lesson. And they'll come up and they'll make their own puzzles. So this is, I use this game all the time. So that's uh, No News Hangman. Next game, if you will turn to the next page, is another one of my favorites. Again, all you need for this is a whiteboard and a marker. Or if it's a small class, you can use paper and pencil. It's tic-tac-toe. We, know how, we all know how to play tic-tac-toe. But it's like all my games, has a twist. Okay. So I just draw a tic-tac-toe board. I number the squares for simplicity. Here's the trick. I ask a question. We got you in two teams. We have an X team and an O team. Okay. I ask a question. If you get the question right, you get to put your X or your o, o where you would like it. Then you roll two dice. If you roll a seven, you get an extra turn. If you roll a double, two ones, two twos, or two threes, you get to erase one of the opponent's marks. If you roll a double, four or five, you get to not only erase, but replace with yours. If you roll a double six, it's wild, and you can go anywhere. You can erase and replace, or you can go on an empty square. Make sense? I left my dice in my purse. Uh, John, can you grab my purse? All right, so we're going to have an X and an O team. All right? So, uh, oh, i got to ask questions. I'll make them easy for you. All right, X team. What is the first book of the Bible? Genesis. Okay. I, I, when I play games with kids, I always have one spokesperson for a team, and we take turns each, um, round, each question. Um, but you can always consult with your um, team if you're not sure about the answer. But that way, if kids disagree, I have 
one person I listen to, and that, that's real important. All right, I'm missing one more die. All right, so where would you like your X or O? I will go with, let me see, Jean, I don't think you gave me a letter, right? So get, where would you like your X? And you can, five, okay, we'll put it in the middle, and then we'll let you roll the two dice. I'm gonna put your team's dice over here. 11, so that's a nothing. Okay, so O team. Um, what's the last book of the Bible? Lisa. Revelation. Revelation. Okay, where would you like to go? Okay, so you're O. All right, roll the two dice to see if you get one of the special. You got a six and a one. You got a seven. So that means what? Extra turn. You get to answer another question. Okay, can you name the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Where would you like to go? Four? Okay. So now we go to the X over here. No. That's an extra. No, you don't get an extra, extra. Okay. That would be kind of fun. Maybe we can. All right. Uh, just a few more. We won't necessarily have to finish the game. Just, um, just play long enough so you understand. Uh, who's the apostle of the Gentiles? Paul. Paul. Okay. Where would you like to go? I'll give it to you. Oh, um, we'll go seven. Seven's probably a good choice. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, so roll the two dice. <laughs> and you got ten. ten. So that's a nothing. All right, and you understand the game, right? So you just keep playing like that. until. And uh, this version's better than the normal tic-tac-toe because normal tic-tac-toe, you always get a cat, right? Well, this one adds a little bit of uh, luck to it and a little bit. Of, and the kids love it. And, and again, all you need is questions. And if you've taught a lesson, pardon me? You can't stop now. <laughs> well, I, wanna, I don't want to keep everybody here all day. All right, all right, next game. Any questions about that one? Okay, next game is called the question. Yes. What's not about this one? About the other one? What do you do with their tickets? What do you do with the tickets? My kids in Sunday school and in our classes collect tickets all for designated amount of time, um, and then I have an auction periodically that they buy things with with their tickets, and the moms, the parents bring in the things to auction off. All right. So the next uh, game, question game, that all you need is questions. Um, you also need some kind of bag. Everybody have a bag somewhere in their house or a box? All right. It's called the question bag or the question box game. And there's many, there's different versions. But the simplest is you just write all your questions on cards, throw them in the bag, throw in a couple cards that say double points or sorry, missed your turn or whatever. Um, and they, all they do is pick a question, read it. If they answer it right, they roll the die, get that number of points. If they miss it, you leave it out, and the other team can choose it, and it's worth double points because somebody else missed it. I usually do this with three teams. It works really well with three. Um, but I found that even making cards was kind of a pain. So instead of making cards, now I have a bag of bottle caps with numbers on them, and the kids love to touch and feel things, right? So they just pick a number, and I have a list of questions with numbers, and if they pick one, I read them question one. If they pick 10, I read them question 10, and uh, oh yeah, the die for points, and then there's little happy faces in here. If they pick that, that's worth double points, so they get to pick a number, and then, then that's worth double points. And again, if the, someone misses the question, the little number thing is put where everybody can see it. If, Someone wants, if another team wants to try the same question for double points, they can. Okay, it sounds simple, but I, I know, the kids in my classes really like this game. Something about rolling the dice and the luck, I don't know. They really like it. Anyway, so that's three games you can use if all you have is questions and um, whiteboard, pencil, or bag. Any questions about the question games? Okay, the next group of games are matching card games. And when I, and literally there are dozens of different games you can play with matching cards. And when I say matching cards, I don't, uh, one certainly is cards that are exactly the same. That would be the classic memory green, right? Um, but you can also have matching cards 
you can have a question that matches an answer. You can have a verse that matches a reference. You can have the first half of a verse that matches the second half of a verse. We're going to play three different versions of matching card games. Um, the, fir and I'm gonna, the first one I'm going to explain um, is the Will of God game. So if we're not going to actually play this one. It's a little more complicated. But, oh, before I do that, let me make a um, comment about the classic memory game. It's a great game. I love it. Everybody knows the classic memory game. You have matching cards, and if you turn two over, if they match, you keep them. I don't, the thing I don't like about it is when you get down to the last four, six or four, the matches are obvious, and it's kind of a given to the person who goes last. So I don't play it that way. There's different ways you can adapt it and to avoid that problem. One is when they turn over two cards and they find a match, just let them keep one and keep the other one as a decoy always on, on the board. Another one is to add cards without matches, and another way is to add cards that have point values, so matches are worth different amounts of points. And you'll kind of see some of the variations in uh, the games I'm going to show you next. Okay? The next game, this one, uh, I call it the Will of God game, um, or walkie in him. I've, there, you can literally use anything, any verses you want for this game. If you'll turn to the back side, you know, to the next where you see the pictures, what you'll see our, all I've done is taken the verses we went over in my lessons and put little pictures to them. I would make two copies of the verses. You know, walk ye in him, walk in newness of life, put on the whole armor of God, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, etc. Take two copies of each of the verse cards. And those are the ones that are going to be your matches they're going to look for. But mixed in with those cards are the next page of cards. Okay? So you could substitute whatever verses you want for this page. But then you would also want this page mixed in. You've got four cards that when they, you put them together, they spell out rapture. You've got four cards that say sin and, and minus one point. And you've got two cards with the cross that are five points. So you put all the cards down on the table, and kids turn over one at a time, but two in a turn. Okay. If the two cards match, they keep them, just like memory. However, if they turn over a sin card, they keep it immediately and their turn's over. It's going to be minus one point at the end. If they turn over a cross card as well, they keep it and immediately their turn's over. If they pick one of the four rapture cards, you just put it to the side. When all four rapture cards are complete, game over. The rapture's happened. Okay, and that's, that's how the game ends, okay? So you never know when the game's going to end. Um, then they count their points. So you get a point for every card you have, so a match is worth two points because it's two cards. Sins are minus one for each. However, if you have a cross card, it wipes out all your sins, okay? If you have a cross card and no sins, then you get the five points, that makes sense? Okay, so you can do this with any verses you want to review. The trick with playing this game, though, if you want to use it for learning, when they get a match, don't just let them grab it. Make them say the verse. You want them to hear the verses over and over and over again. And even when they don't match, they turn it over, say the verse. They turn the other one over, say the verse. You're going to hear the verses over and over and over again. And what did Sherry tell us we need? Repetition. So that's the point of these kinds of games. Okay, so that is my favorite of the memory with a twist kind of games. There's another more complicated version of this in my book that's a lot more fun, but it's a little more complicated. So oh, we're not going to do that one. Um, next, the next kind of, oh, I forgot <coughs> to tell you. This kind of game also makes a great craft. Um, this is what I sent home from one conference. This is the game I just showed you. And if you want to just make the cards, I made them the size where you, if you don't have a laminator, you can just put package sealing tape on both sides. It keeps them really um, nice for a long time and just throw the instructions in there with them and makes a nice craft for the kids to take home. And then they can play at home and hear the verses even more. Okay. The next review game is if you have matches of questions, 
questions and answers. Um, the e if you've got younger kids and you want to make this game easy, the way I do it is I put the question cards face down. And I can't, you won't be able to see that if I did that. So I'm using my pocket chart. So the covered cards would be the face down cards. In this version, it's the question cards. The answers are face up to make it easy. So um, we have two teams. You went first last time. Somebody over here, pick a question. Five. OK. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I thought you got the sorry one. OK, John 17, 17 says, thy word is, can you find the answer? True. True. OK, so you would get to keep this card, and you would get a point for that. Oh, I lied. You always keep the answer cards there. You would get this card, and you would get a point, OK? And um, then you would pick a question and find the answer. Anybody want to give me a number? Anybody? Three. Three. In Psalms 12, 6 through 7, God promises to what? His pure words forever. Preserve. So you would keep the question card, right? And let's say you missed a question. Someone pick question. Oh. Someone pick question four about how many men did God use to write the Bible? And you missed that question. I leave this here for the next team. If they want to pick a missed question, just like in the question bag game, it's now double points. So now if they get it right, how many, about how many men did God use to write the Bible? Anybody know? About 40. So now you would keep both cards because now it's double points. And at the end, you just count your cards, and that's how many points you have. Does that make sense? So that's just a real simple way to ask them questions in a more fun way. Um, any questions about that one? That's a, pretty simple. All right. The next game is a little more challenging, but a little more fun, I think. If you will turn, it's called, um, I call it Find the Card. What I'm going to do, in this case, the matches, if you will turn to the back, it says 169 and 171 on the bottom, you will see verses separated in half. So, for example, do not think of yourselves more highly than, highly than you ought. We being many are, and then on the other side, one body in Christ with the reference, Romans 12, 3 through 5. These are the cards I'm going to be using. What you would do is cut the cards out, and then you cut them in half. So the match is the first half of the verse to the second half of the verse. So uh, like, kind of like the one I just did, the only thing I'm going to have showing is the answers, which would be the second half of the verse, right? How many did I do? I did six. I did seven. That's an odd number. Okay. Okay. Now, these are the second half of the verses. Can you see those? Because you have one minute to try to remember where they are. Because I'm going to cover them up in a minute, and you're going to have to find them. So I'm going to read them to you, okay, as I cover. One, two, three, four, five, six, I need one more. Hang on. All right. So this says, and you, you can look on your handout to see more clearly what they are. This says, by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 12. This is one body in Christ, Romans 12, 3 through 5. This is cleave to that which is good, Romans 12, 9. Wherewith one may edify another, Romans 14, 19. Fulfill the law, Romans 13, 8. Continuing instant in prayer, Romans 12, 12. And then um, preferring one another, Romans 12, 10. Okay, I'm going to give you about 20 seconds because there's only six. Now, with kids, with my classes, I usually use like 12 or 16. 
Well, if it's a verse, it's probably more like 12. Um, and then I give you a little bit of time to study them, try to remember where they are, and then I cover them up. And as I cover them up, I read them one more time. By the renewing of your mind, one body in Christ, cleave to that which is good, wherewith one may edify another, fulfilled the law, continuing instant in prayer, preferring one another. Okay, so now the game is you have to find the card. I'm going to read the first half of the verse, and your job is to find the second half. Okay, so, (laughs) and, um, all right, let me see. How about this one? And B, two teams, I usually do three teams with this game because you'll see for the same reason, if you, every time you miss, it's an extra point added to the team that finds it. And if the next team misses, then it's three points. And if the next team misses, then it's four points. So the, especially if you have like, you know, 12, 15 cards, they can get a lot of points if everybody misses it before them. And obviously it gets easier the more, you, longer you play because they'll see the, the wrong, when they get wrong answers, they'll see where they are. So let's, um, somebody from this team, be not conformed to this world, but ye, be ye transformed. And can anybody know? Number one? Oh, okay. So you would get a, one point for that. Okay. But I would, I would leave it there. Everything stays on the board. Okay, so now you get to try this one. I better mix them up. I might have them in order, huh? <laughs> All right. Love one another. For he that loveth another hath. And you've got the answers there, so. Anybody know where that one is? Yes. Five. Five hath fulfilled the law. So you would get a point. But, um, uh, yay, team. So one to one. Should we play this out? <laughs> All right. How about over here? Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Anybody know where the rest of this one is? Six, she says. Continuing instant in prayer. You guys are good. <laughs> All right, but do you see how to play? The trick is whenever one's missed, you just add another point, and you can decide, depending on the age of kids, whether to cover it up or leave it exposed so it's not picked again, and then it's easy to count how many points they get because they get the number of points equal to the number of cards showing when they finally find it. Um, So that's called find the card. And again, the trick is they're hearing the verses over and over again. And usually, if it's not verse halves, like it's questions and answers, if they get the wrong answer, I still make them tell me the right answer, or I make them tell me more about the answer they did choose. So I'm using it as a teaching and reviewing opportunity. Yes? Well, so if... if Okay, so if team A gets it wrong, team B tries again, they get it wrong. Now team A goes again, they get it right. They get one, two, three points because it's been missed previously. Does that make sense? So that's why sometimes I leave the card showing. If I don't leave the card showing, if I have an older group to make it harder, um, instead of leaving the card showing, I just put tick marks to count the points. But basically you get a point. One more point for every time, every time the question before you get it right is wrong. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, let's see. What's next? hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, I didn't put this in the packet. I kind of threw it in at the last minute. Um, I like to cut verses apart and make the kids put them back together. So I like to make puzzles. This is a puzzle I did of uh, the theme was walkie and him and all the verses we talked about. And I just put key phrases from each of the verses on different people. You know, I, I did a grid, four by four, and I just made sure my pictures and words were split. And then I cut it. And then the kids have a race to see. I give them, kids each a copy. They get to color it. And then they cut it out. And then they have a race to see who can put it together first. And that's the same thing you can do with the, the the cards that we just used for this game. Instead of playing this game, you, you can they each have a set in their book. They color, they cut it out, and then you have a race to see who can put them together the fastest first. 
So there's different ways to use verse halves. I like to use verse halves. You can also, another really fun game with verse halves, is um, to give each student in the class a half of a verse, and then they have to find the other student that has their other half. That's a good icebreaker at the beginning of the year if you want kids to get to know each other again. So lots of things you can do with verse halves. Okay, the next one, we just played find the card. Now we're going to play avoid the card. And for this one, you have to close your eyes. You can't, you can't see what I'm putting on the board because you can't see. I'll tell you when. You don't have to quite yet. Let me find all my... Um, one, one, two, three, four. All right. Okay. All right, now you have to close your eyes. No peeking. Hopefully the people on the video are closing their eyes, too. <laughs> okay, you can open them. All right, what I've put on the board are, um, well, you can see what I put on the board. It's the next two pages of your handout. I do a, ser a lesson series on uh, our com completing Christ, a lot of the things that we have because we're in Christ. You know, redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We're accepted in the beloved. We have peace with God, righteousness of God, no condemnation. So they've learned these verses. Those are the verses I've put behind the cards. But I've also put sin and death. Which cards do you think you want to avoid? <laughs> so um, there's a lot of different ways to play this game. The easiest is you divide the kids into three teams. And this one, you have to have three teams uh, because there's two cards to avoid and you need one winner. So we'll have this side of the room, this side of the room, and the men. Men are a separate team, okay, because I need three teams, okay? So you men have to play too. All right. So all you, the easiest version is really easy. All you do is pick a number and I read you the verse so you're hearing the verse again. If it's something you have in Christ, you're in. If it's sin or death, you're out. Last man standing wins. Kids love this game. They, I, they really do. Um, all right. Men, you get to go first. Give me a number. Three. Three. Okay, so you have, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So you're in. Okay. All right. Team two, give me a number. Eight. Well, make up your mind. <laughs> Eight. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 3. You're in. Okay, next team. Give me a number. Ten. Crucified, buried, and raised with him. <laughs> Romans 6. Phew! <laughs> Men. Seven. Oh! <laughs> you died. Men are out. All right. <laughs> Next team. Over here. Six. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. All right? You're in. Next team. Second row. Second row. One. You are complete in him. Colossians 2, 10. You're in. And sorry, man. Next. Team two over here. Someone from the back row. Eleven. Eleven. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All right, over here. Four. Four. Oops. Six. 
victory. Thanks be to God, which gives us a victory through Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, over here. Front row. Nine. Nine. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Galatians 2.20. Okay, over here. Oh, sorry. Over here. Somebody be brave. Back, you, back to. Twelve. Twelve. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Uh, Colossians 1.14. All right. You guys get to determine who's going to win. You know, it's amazing how many times we get to the last two cards. Well, that really is amazing how many times I play this game. And, all right. Yes, you're going to win or lose on this. Five. Five. What? Oh, five? No. <laughs> now. Because you didn't choose to, I would give, I'd say you were both winners. Because you, you can't, because you didn't pick it, right? But, uh, so we got two winners, and we got one loser, the men. <laughs> the preachers. <laughs> All right. So that's avoid the card. And you don't have to do, I mean, you, you can use your own, uh, like if you've taught a Bible story, Uh, Like Noah and the Ark. I don't know. You can have, you know, the flood be the thing. And you can have just one avoid the card. Oh, I forgot. Always, when you're done, you know, now I, as the teacher, have the cards. You make the kids tell you how many they can remember. So how many things can you remember that you have in Christ? And, And again, I... Yeah, so, so, and you would get a point for everything you can remember. I just go and turn. So can you remember one? Uh, did you just say victory? Okay, so victory. Now you give me one. Complete. Pastors can, or men, can you give me one? Well, that's okay. Now, no, now I'm just. <laughs> so we just see how many you guys can remember. You get some, you get to earn a few points now. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Let's see if you guys can get them all. Oh, no, you have the sheets in front of you. That's cheating. Okay. <laughs> All right. So don't look at your sheets. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Your turn over here. New creation. Yeah. New. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If I can find it. Here it is. Okay. And how about over here? Uh, I think they did that one already. Yeah. Yes. Peace with God. Romans five one. Men. Pardon me? Crucified. Crucified, buried, and raised. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't do complete in Christ. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, we did. Never mind. Over here. We got four more. Oh, you're not supposed to be looking. <laughs> no condemnation. Good. No condemnation. And over here. <laughs> got through redemption through his blood. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. The judge's gavel. No. Uh, righteousness of God. Yes. He's a man. He counts. Okay. <laughs> he just wasn't sitting over there. <laughs> All right. And can anybody get the last one? Oh, we did that one. Crucified, buried, and raised. Okay, good. So you did, I just give an extra, I give five points to the winners and an extra point for each one they can remember afterwards. So that's how I play that. Pardon me? <laughs> yeah. How do I make my pocketboard? Super simple. I have Cynthia buy me a phone board at Walmart, and then... Um, I just take, I took strips of um, construction paper and package sealing tape and just taped it down so that the um, construction paper doesn't stick. But you make sure the tape goes beyond the ends of the construction paper and underneath it so it keeps the 
um, cards from falling out. You can take a look at it afterwards. Super simple. If you have a long stretch, sometimes it gets stretched out, so I just put tape between it to keep it nice and tight so the cards don't lean. But this is real handy in a big class. Um, I, in my writing classes, I couldn't survive without my pocket chart. So um, I thought this was going to be like five or six people. And originally, I just was, we were just going to play games at the table. And then the day before we were coming, she told me, no, there would probably be more than that. So I had her buy me this so I could put every, make everything big in the pockets. So it's real handy when you have a, a big class. All right. Um, Let's, moving on. Uh, the next page, next section is board game kind of games. I think everyone knows how to play bingo, right? Now, I used to try to make bingo boards, and they were a pain because the way you normally play bingo is every student needs their own board, and it needs to be different. It could be the same pages. So I used to make one board and cut the squares and have them all glue them in different places so they all had a different board. And that works, and it's a fun craft. But if, if you want an easier way to do it, uh, turn the page. And I just made a board. This comes from my Romans 8 lesson. So um, it's the game I used to kind of teach Romans 8.28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And I try to really emphasize to the kids, uh, because we've been studying through the book of Romans, by the time we get to Romans 8, the all things has a context. It's the all things we've been talking about in Romans 1 through 8. All these things are the good things that works um, for our good, right? So those are the things you see on the squares. We've been justified freely by his grace through the redemption in Christ. Is that good? That's good. Faith is counted for righteousness. That works for good. We're baptized into Christ. That works for our good. So you see all the different things we've learned in Romans on this bingo board. Now, this is a little bit different because the middle has got the verse in there. Normally, if I was doing bingo, there would be two squares here. But it's okay. It works. So all you do to use this as your bingo board is every student has the same board. It's in their book. You, as the teacher, would just make several copies, maybe three or four copies, and you'd cut out the squares, and you'd put them in a box or a bag or lay them out, and students would take turns choosing a card and then covering the matching square with a button or a bean or a coin, whatever you give them. And then the next student would pick a card. And the trick is, um, as they're going around taking turns, they're inevitably going to pick something they've already covered, so then they can't cover anything. So the first one to cover, you know, four in a row down or three in a row across would win if you play bingo. The first one to cover all of them would win if you want to play lotto. Lotto, I don't know if you're, some people don't know what lotto is. Lotto is really the same thing as bingo, but you have to cover your whole board instead of just a, a row. So if you want the game to last longer. And then when you run out, if you've only copied three or four sets of the cards, when they've gone through them, you shuffle them and go through them again. That's why I don't have them put the card on top. That's why we have some tokens like buttons or beans or whatever. That makes sense? That's pretty easy, right? Another way to play lotto is with verses. <clears throat> so if you'll turn the page, you'll see uh, Romans 3, verses 24 and 25. And you'll see some words missing. Um, this is a tough verse because it has so many big Bible words in it. Those big Bible words are on the page across in boxes. Grace, well, that's not so big, but propitiation, justified, faith, and redemption. The point of the lesson um, when I teach Romans 3 is to, for them to learn these words. So the game is going to help with that. So what you'll see in the verse is blank spaces where they're going to have to put these cards, the words that fill in the blank. But you'll see a little picture symbol and definition there. So being declared righteous with a little judge's gavel. I'm like Kathy, I'm very visual. Um, so I always have pictures to help them associate. So our judge's gavel is, our, um, is what we do for justified or righteous. And being justified by his grace, there's a gift. Through the redemption, that's a little guy running away from a ball and chain because he's been set free by a price being paid. In whom God set forth to be a propitiation, the fully satisfying sacrifice. That's a little sacrifice. Through faith in his blood, and I always use a cross for faith. So the game, this is their game board, 
and the game pieces are the words. And you just make several, uh, you make as many copies of the words as there are kids playing. And then you just spread them out, or you can stack them, doesn't matter. They pick a word. If they can put it on their board in the right place, it stays on their board. If they put it in the wrong place, they have to put it back. Um, if they pick a word they've already put down, they have to put it back, right? So in the first one to fill up, there's a lot of the first time, the first one to fill up their verse width. Make sense? That's pretty easy, right? Okay, and you can do this with any verse. All right, oh, my favorite game. Next one. Um, uh, next one, when I thought, think, where's Kathy? When I thought of destination, I thought of a rocket ship because <laughs> we're going to heaven. So mine's a rocket ship, but it's a predestination game because we were in Ephesians 1, and I was trying to teach them that individual people aren't predestinated to be saved and go to heaven. Saved people who are in Christ are predestinated to go to heaven because that's the destination of the body of Christ. So how could I make a game to help them understand this? So that's what this game is. And a little background to this game, when my, John, it was Jonathan, was in about fourth grade, he invented a game he called Forward and Backward. And it was fun, we really liked it. It was just a simple board game. It was a trail like this in a square. And you just roll two dice and you can move the total of the two dice in one direction, or you, like if you rolled a four and a three, you could go four one way and three the other way. The goal is to land on the winning square. Well, in this game, the winning square is faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So on each child's turn, they roll two dice. They're trying to land directly on faith. So they can either combine the total of their two dice to get there, or they can go forward and back throughout the game. So anyone who lands on faith immediately gets a ticket to go on board the body of Christ, and they put their piece on the body of Christ. And you keep playing until somebody rolls a 10. So even if you've, even if you've got your, got, gotten on board the body of Christ, you still keep rolling when it's your turn because this part my husband didn't like. <laughs> when they roll a 10, the rapture happens, and everyone in Christ blasts off to heaven. Anyone left on earth loses, okay? <laughs> and he said, why 10? <laughs> and I'm going, well, I don't know. You have to have some number. So if anyone can think of another way to blast them off, because we have to have winners and losers in the game, right? Or everybody could win if everyone gets in the body of Christ before you roll at 10. But the idea you want them to understand is that predestination is everybody in the body of Christ has this predetermined destination. And when the rapture happens, that's where they're going, right? And actually, the instructions in my book say to put this on an envelope and seal them in there. Um, so, But if you don't want to do that, it's right here. And uh, so that's how I teach predestination. Um, if you have small groups, board games are fun. I teach the gospel with a board game that the kids actually make and take home. And I apologize, I didn't copy it for you. I just brought it to show you. Um, there's, I just wanted to show you that how easy it is to make board games. You just get a folder and you make, you copy L boxes and then you've got a little trail this is how I teach the gospel. They move from, it's Romans Road, kind of. They move from Romans 3.23, all have sinned, to the Lord is righteous, in, uh, Psalm 145.17, God is holy in all his ways, righteous in all his works. Romans 6.23a, the wages of sin is death. 1 Corinthians 15.3, Christ died for our sins. Verse 4, was buried and rose again. 20, Romans 6.23b, the, wages, um, the gift of God is eternal life. And then the one who gets to the top first wins. But throughout, you'll see if they land on squares, they have to go back to. The trick is if they roll a six, they have to pick a picture card, and the cards look like these verses. So if I'm here and I roll a six and I pick a cross, I have to go back to the cross. Or, where are my picture cards? Um, well, they're somewhere. Oh, here they are. Yeah, they're just cards with the same pictures. Okay. And every time they land or pass a verse, they have to say it. And if they can say it, they can go up to two more. And you can help them. Um, so that's a simple, simple way to keep, let them keep hearing 
the Bible verses. And I did the same thing with, uh, I play this on Resurrection Sunday, uh, the last days of Christ. These are just scenes from the last uh, days of Christ's life and who you win when you get to the resurrection. So just, you can plug in your own ideas. I just wanted to show you how simple it is. You just use folders and cut out squares. It's simple to make for you. Okay. Um, all right, so that's all I brought. Any, anybody have any questions? Okay, well, I hope that was helpful. I hope you use